Hi. How are you doing my friends? This is Zeb from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So we are going to be cooking a steak in this video. A steak, I hear you ask. Yes, a steak. So this video is in response to a um, challenge that was put out a good few months ago. So I'm quite late to the party we're making this particular video. And what this video was, this was started by Hayes Outdoors, the Yorkshire Stallion. And it was all about raising uh, awareness centered around mental health. And so uh, there was a tag going around and you cook a steak and you basically talk about your experiences uh, in regards to mental health. So I was tagged by Mike of MCQ Bushcraft and I was later tagged by Liam from Primal Nomad. Uh, both great guys with great channels and I will put a link below to both of those videos so do feel free to go and check those out. And so what they did was they kindly tagged me to uh, cook a steak and uh, obviously talk about my experiences centered around mental health. So for those of you, there's quite a lot of new subscribers. So for those of you that might not be aware, I'm vegetarian. I don't kind of like shout about it on my channel because I know it's quite annoying when people who are vegetarian or vegan kind of keep going on about it. So I very rarely talk about it, uh, but I am vegetarian. Um, Technically, I'm pescatarian or pescatarian, however you want to pronounce it. So I eat the occasional bit of fish, but it is very occasional. But yeah, for most of the time, I am vegetarian. So what kind of steak am I going to be cooking? Hmm. We're cooking one of these tofu fillet steaks. Now, technically, when you're cooking tofu, uh, you kind of... you. Think of it like a sponge, like a food sponge. So you marinate it in whatever flavor you want, typically overnight, uh, and then obviously you cook it, and then obviously it encompasses that flavor, whatever you marinated it with. So this is the first time I'm actually having tofu, which is already pre-flavored, pre-marinated. So it'll be interesting to see how I get on with this. And also with this, gonna be making some mushrooms as well, sliced mushrooms. Um, I actually forage these, um, it's, it's a really advanced skill. Uh, and I foraged it from a special location called Aldi's. Um, now, a lot of people don't know about it, that's because you're not as skilled as I am when it comes to the field of bushcraft. So you've got to go at the right time of year to Aldi's to kind of forage these from there. Uh, and in a future video, when I feel you guys are ready and you're kind of at my level with the whole bushcraft side of things, um, then obviously I'll show you how you forage these from Aldi's. It's quite a specialized skill, you've got to be careful how you do it. You can get attacked by single mothers looking for the last trolley with their pound coin. So it can get quite dangerous. You've got to be careful of what time of year you go and how you approach the last of the mushrooms in Aldi's. So we'll be cooking the steak with the sliced mushrooms. Now I do actually have all the, the wood and everything ready to go. So what I'm going to do just before I get the fire going and cook this and talk, uh, obviously I will now talk about my experiences with mental health. So obviously when you're talking about mental health, it's a very broad spectrum. You know, you have things like uh, the obvious ones like depression, you have anxiety, um, you know, you can have like uh, agoraphobia, you, know, you can have a whole slew of things. You can have anxiety, you have a lot of panic attacks. Um, it can be very varied. It can be for some people very mild, where it just kind of occasionally shows up all the way to people where it's completely debilitated. You know, they're not able to go out. Uh, they're just crippled, you know, and obviously at the very far end of the spectrum You have people that commit suicide as a result of that and um, Fairly recently at the time of recording this video you had the frontman Keith Flint of Prodigy the group Prodigy um, Who I grew up with in the kind of rave scene here in the UK um, During the kind of uh, early 90s and uh, that's another conversation for another day And I grew up with a Prodigy I actually met them once at a rave uh, and actually local boys, you know, Essex boys um, and uh, they had everything, you know, these guys, uh, technically. And um, what happened with Keith Flint? Committed suicide, you know. And um, I was really saddened when I, when I heard about that. First, I was saddened to hear about his, uh, uh, his death. And then to hear that he committed suicide was, was yeah, it was, it was pretty heart-wrenching. Um, and so, you know, you hear a whole slew of these from people across the spectrum. And obviously, he's well-known. But then, obviously, there are just many, many people who are not well-known, just kind of average kind of people like me and you. Who just go about their normal day-to-day -day lives and so there is a broad spectrum of kind of mental health um, that affects people in a whole myriad of ways and so my experiences I kind of to kind of keep it simplified my experiences with mental health are the following I kind of grew up conventional outside London in kind of the London Essex region uh, I grew up around the rave scene so everything that goes along with the rave scene so no need to discuss that here right I think you can use your imagination um, and everything was kind of fine. One thing with me, I'm always a bit of a loner. I've always been quite insular and, and very introverted. 
Um, I didn't really have friends growing up in school. Um, and it was only really when I started to, you know, I turned 16 that I really started to let myself go. Uh, but for my whole life, I've been quite introverted and quite kind of insular within myself. Now, there were times in my life where it was kind of a little bit to do with this kind of fear of kind of being in public and, and around other people. But really, if I'm honest with you, I just had a preference just to kind of be by myself and kind of do my own thing. So I kind of done the usual thing, went to college, went to uni, uh, ran a business, didn't go too well, ended up working, working in social services. Now, up until I started working in kind of like, I kind of say my, my kind of mid to late 20s, um, I was really outgoing. I used to do a lot of stuff. I used to do a lot of traveling, a lot of backpacking, a lot of music, play music, and uh, a whole slew of things. I used to have a very active life, uh, going out all the time, kind of being around a lot of friends. So everything was really great. And then I say, kind of in, in my mid to late 20s, I started working in the field of uh, social work, uh, first in London for the first three, four years, and then for about five years out in the county of Essex. And it's weird what happened. I started working up until kind of my mid 30s. And um, I just worked. I just worked the whole time. I didn't have a social life. I didn't really see anyone during that whole time. And fast forward to keep it very, very simplified, I kind of woke up one day and I was like, where the hell have the past nine years of my life gone? I was like, flipping out, this can't be right. Um, and so yeah, it was around that time I, yeah, I left. I set up my own practice uh, as a therapist, even though I looked like I need therapy. And um, it was around that time I really started to realize that, hang on a second, like I've I've been working my fingers to the bone for all of these years and I'm still the same. Yeah, I'm not happy. Um, I had nothing to show for it. I thought, where the hell have all those years gone? And I stopped doing all the things I used to enjoy, which you become an adult. And um, so fast forward, that's when I started to get into the outdoors. I started to make big shifts in my life. And I started to kind of build my own business, which is an online marketing business. I've been running that for a number of years. It's come with a lot of challenges, but it's allowed me to break away from the monotony of a day-to-day -day job. And fast forward, yeah, I run a business I really, really enjoy. It's still hard work. But now, more importantly, as of especially about three or four years ago, I started to make big, big shifts in my life. I you know, became vegetarian. I started meditating. And not from any religious point of view, just generally. Uh, meditating, yoga, exercising, paying a lot more attention to the company I keep around me and so forth. And I've slowly started to get to a point where I'm in a much, much better place now. Um, and it wasn't really until my mid-30s I realised that actually I've been suffering from depression for a number of years. Um, I just didn't realise it because I've just kept myself busy the whole time uh, working. And so, you know, it's when you're alone with your thoughts, you realise, oh, actually, you know what? Um, I've got a few issues there. So um, it was all kind of tied in together. It's like the perfect storm. And I started to make big, big changes in my life. It wasn't easy, uh, but I did it. And fast forward to where I am today, thankfully, um, I do have my moments where I kind of have that deep thought and I fall into a bit of a funk kind of mentally. But generally, 95% uh, of the time, I'm actually fine. I'm grateful I don't have anything debilitating in terms of my mental health uh, and I've got myself into a good place. But what it's required is me taking ownership of my life, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. Uh, but it's, it taken, it's, it's got to a point, in, it got to a point in my life where I, I, I stopped blaming everyone else uh, and just took full responsibility for everything, for where I was at in life, and then subsequently taking the steps to then rectify that. And it all just came down to just looking at every area of my life and then making sure I got it into order. So that's kind of where I'm at now. So I'm grateful to be in a position where, you know, uh, I'm, I'm in a much, much better place in my life in general. Um, but I have been through that funk and trust me, I know what it's like. I've lost friends uh, to mental health and you know, committed suicide and a, a whole bunch of stuff. A close friend of mine who suffers from really bad panic attacks. Um, and so I know what it's like. You know, I worked in mental health for a while as well. So I'm very, very familiar. So that's kind of where I'm at now. More importantly, you know, I don't like to call it my advice. I'm not someone to give you advice, but my thoughts on the whole topic of mental health. The first thing you've got to do, you've got to treat it holistically. You've got to realise it's not just one thing. You know, uh, when you look at any field uh, aspect or symptom of mental health, it's an accumulation of things. It's kind of, um, uh, it's, it's all the things you've done up until now, the decisions you made, the food you eat, the company you keep, uh, the books you read, the things you watch, and everything that happens in your life from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. And so the moment you realise it's a holistic thing, you can't look at just one area of your life and then that's the reason why I'm suffering from depression or anxiety or whatever it is that you may or someone you know may be going through you've got to realize that actually it's a very holistic approach you've got to take to that and with that in mind this is what I did and this is maybe a, a suggestion if I may uh, if you're going through anything and that is the following 
It's fair enough me saying you've got to treat things holistically, but here's what you really got to do on a practical level. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to break down all areas of your life. You've got to break down your health, your relationship, and literally take out pen and paper. Look at your relationships, look at your finances, look at your work, look at your hobbies, your interests, your friends, um, you know, uh, your, your, your everything, every area of your life, you break it down into its categories. Then with each uh, topic, what you then got to do, you then got to write down all the things you feel are not going right. And this is where you've got to be really honest with yourself. Don't, don't lie to yourself. Don't, don't kind of think yeah, you've got to write down something that, that looks good. No one else is going to see this. Only you are going to see this. So what you've got to do is write it down. So for example, it could be relationships. If you feel there are certain things in your relationship with your spouse or your family or, or whatever, or with your friends that are, is not going well for whatever reason, um, then write that down. If it's people you've fallen out with, if it's people you've got you know, issues with or whatever. Same with your finances, same with your health. With your health, be really honest. You know, if there's things in your life, you know, you're, you're, you're drinking too much alcohol or you're eating fast foods all the time or whatever it may be, write down all the things. And this will take a bit of time, you know, when you're first doing it, but you maybe never put that thought there before. Uh, but sit down, write down all the things you feel are going wrong in your life and be very, very specific. And this is the key here. You've got to be really specific about all the things that you feel are not going right in your life in all the different areas of your life. And this is an ongoing thing, this list. You know, every day you're going to keep adding to this and keep doing that. Now, once you've done that on one side, now what you're going to do on that same list is write down your ideal scenario where you want to be. So with your health, write down ideally where you want to be. Maybe you want to be in a position where you cut down or, or stop drinking or you stop smoking cigarettes. You know, you, um, you start drinking more water. You... Um, you want to eat a more balanced diet, whatever it may be. Same with your finances, your relationships, your family, uh, uh, relationships with your children, um, you know, your hobbies, whatever it may be. Write down all the, the things, the ideal scenario where you want them to be at. And now here comes the key. You've then got to work out methodical steps to get from where you are now with each of those things you've written down and take it one, one step at a time methodical steps to where you want to be so for example if you're smoking cigarettes and your ideal scenario is to quit smoking cigarettes then let's say i don't know for example you're smoking 20 cigarettes a day you your goal might be over the next year you're going to quit so one week at a time you cut down you know uh, or every couple of weeks you cut down by one cigarette so by the end of the year you've completely eliminated and this is the key you've got to be methodical you've got to be realistic you've got to be pragmatic but you've got to take very methodical steps you know, how many times have you seen people with cigarettes, they'll say, right, that's it, I'm going to quit. They crunch up the cigarette packet, throw it in the bin, and then two days later, they're back in the you know, news agent buying another packet. Um, that's why, you, you know, you've got to be quite methodical in how you approach it. And the important thing is that you just take one step at a time because a lot of the, the anxiety that you feel, once again, whatever uh, spectrum on the mental health that you're suffering from, you're going to realize that actually it's taking you from where you are now to where you want to be one tiny step at a time. And it's all about small incremental changes. It's amazing how time flies by, especially as you're getting older. Uh, so it's very important that you just take those little baby steps and you're going to have hiccups along the way and that's all going to be great. Uh, but you've got to do that. Another important thing is, and I've got to be careful how I say this, but you've got to be you got to take a really, really strong stance against the people around you because people are going to mock you. They're going to say, oh, he's not going to do this or she's not going to do that. Oh, you know, why are you wasting your time for whatever it may be? Um, and you've got to kind of block that out completely. You know, you really do. And do it in, obviously in a very polite, uh, uh, delicate manner, but you've got to be quite ruthless in terms of that company you keep around you. Um, and just knowing that this is important for you, that you've got to do these things, okay? So that's really the steps, taking, being honest about where you're at in all the areas of your life, where you want to be, and then making small incremental steps and changes along the way to get there. And here's the thing, the whole thing is a journey. You know, I always say life is a journey, it's like my tagline, um, and it really is, it's a process along the way. And what's gonna happen in the very beginning when you do this, you're gonna think, well, where the hell do I start? How do I know what I'm screwing up on and what makes me unhappy or you know, what I want out of my health or, or finances or relationships? And that's fine. The key thing is by, by starting that discussion with yourself, you're planting that spit, uh, seed and that will grow every single day as you move forward every hour of every day of every week of every year. And what will happen is that will just compound itself. And what you're doing, you're, you're replacing bad habits with good habits. The big thing you find with depression, I talk from experience, is you get yourself in a rut and it's like a whirlwind, you know, that kind of drags you down into the ground. And once you get on that, you're just going down and down and down and down and down. And so what you're doing by replacing it with good habits and 
and, and good routine, you're kind of reversing that and you're going back up and now you're pushing yourself forward one tiny step at a time. I appreciate, especially when you've got depression or anxiety, to be in a bit of a funk and not be able to function at all. And that's fine. Sometimes you've got to just let it be and ride it out. But really the key, and this is where I want to end off on, what I found for myself is the key is momentum. You've got to have momentum, forward momentum. Every day, you've just got to be doing stuff. You've got to be pushing yourself forward. You've got to be setting yourself goals in different areas of your life because that now gives you purpose. And it doesn't have to be anything grandiose. It could be small, like tidying up your room. It could be you know, spending a little bit more time with your partner or whatever it may be. Um, spending a little bit of time on your hobbies and, and things that you're actually passionate about. Um, so all of these things, is all about setting yourself goals, being realistic, uh, about what you're going to be able to achieve in a short space of time, be it a week or a month, you know, or, or even a couple of months, uh, and then taking those small incremental steps. But the key thing is, is that you set yourself those goals, you know where you're at, you know where you want to be, and you set yourself small milestones along the way. And the key thing is, by having a routine planned out and mapped out every single day of every week, what it does, it removes the opportunity for that depression to kick in, the anxiety, the stress, because, you know, like I say, the idle mind is the devil's playground, you know, so if, you, if you've got no purpose, if you've got nothing to do, if you've got nothing to live for, then of course, you know, it's just going to fester and make things even worse. So that's where I want to kind of end off. The key thing being, uh, and I'm not trying to make it sound like some, you know, woo-woo kind of personal development speech, but, yeah, I'm talking from experience and what I've had to do, and it's not been easy. You've got to enter some very dark places in your mind. Um, but by doing that, that's your only option. The other option is to move forward or just to kind of like slide into a very slippery slope, a very dangerous slope downwards. Uh, and obviously we don't want to do that and you know where that can lead for certain people. So the key thing is know where you're at in your life right now. Be honest about it uh, and take small incremental steps to move towards the direction you want to be. And the key thing is to be specific. Don't tell anyone what you're doing. Just get on with it. Uh, you're going to find a company around you changes, everything around you changes, and that's good. You know, it, you want people to look at you after a number of years and think, oh, wow, you've changed. And you want that to be a good thing. <laughs> you want that to be a good thing, right? Um, but you don't want to be the same person you were last week or last year or 10 years ago. You know, that's a, that's a scary thought. And I was at that place in my life. So there you go. Those are my experiences. You know, um, I hope you find some resolve in what you're doing. Uh, but the key thing is, you know, you've got to be, you've got to take a very practical approach to dealing with these things. It's not easy. And it's going to take a lot of time and sometimes it could be a, a lifetime's journey uh, resolving all of these issues. But you've got to make that start um, and I wish you the best of luck. There you go. So I think it's time. Should we get the steak on? Should we do it? Let's get the fire going. Let's make our steak. Going to be preparing the food on this. This is actually turned on a polo, so it's turned by hand and foot. And this is turned by a buddy of mine, Doug Dunn, who's based in North Wales. This is Spalted Beach. Beautiful work. It's actually quite difficult to turn these, but he's done an incredible job. Right, so we've got our Aldi's mushrooms. I've been foraged from Aldi's. So an advanced technique, like I said, I'll show you in a separate video. Man, I love my mushrooms. I'm using the uh, Wessex Blades knife by Scott. I'm using this a lot at the moment. It's a very different grind than what I'm normally used to. But you know what? That's uh, I really like it. It's a real workhorse. It's a much thicker stock than what I normally use also. Um, so what I find is I'm just able to give it a much more of a battering, really, uh, compared to kind of normal knives. Even normal knives, I'll be honest with you, I just kind of batter them around as per normal. I don't get too delicate about them. But this one, because of just the way it's built, built a bit, bit stronger than your normal standard knives. I'm actually loving it. So there we go. Chopped up. So first thing we'll do, we'll get the steak on. 
And then we'll do the mushrooms. So my preferred utensil for today is this serving spoon made by Buddy Lee Stoffer. Beautiful work as always. Birch, I believe this is from. Beautiful shape. And also, I started using this stuff here. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what she says. For cooking, that is. Let me specify. You and your filthy mind. So I started using this stuff as of about a year ago because of my buddy Mark. So if you see in the earlier stages of the build of this base camp, uh, you see my buddy Mark, who will be making a return. Um, and uh, he put me onto this. This has been out for years, this spray olive oil stuff. And the thing is this, I've been using the standard olive oil. I didn't really think too much of this, didn't give it too much thought. Then he started using it, he piqued my curiosity. And I'll tell you what, I don't know why I didn't use this before, you know, this is amazing. Seriously, it coats the uh, uh, frying pan or wherever it is you're, you're applying this to a, a lot more evenly. You know, it's not like a dollop of olive oil straight out of a bottle, which is what I was normally doing. And also use a lot less as well. Um, I said, this is fantastic. Look at that, man. Not getting sponsored by these lots, so don't worry. Imagine that. You know things are bad when you're getting sponsored by an olive oil company. There you go. Look at that. This stuff is pretty good, you know. So the steak is done. What we'll do, we can just move that to the side of the pan. Keeps it warm. Now let's put a fresh dollop of olive oil. And go to mushrooms. Oh, oh, oh. We've got two pieces sacrificed to the fire gods. That's fine. Spray a bit of olive oil on the mushrooms. So my friends, the meal is done. I know the, mu the mushrooms look burnt, but they're not. They've just darkened up. Man, it smells really good, you know. It's a shame we can't have smelly vision on these videos. I'm actually christening this. It's Malcolm from the Hidden Woodsman. It's a meat eater. A meat eater. So I've not used it yet, so let's tuck into the mushrooms, the mushrooms. So good. That is so, so good. Well, the main thing now, so you cut open the steak, 
And you know what? It won't be a bushcraft video unless we use a proper bushcraft now. Look at that. That's proper bushcraft, that, mate. Wessex blades. Love this knife. Let's cut this open. And you can't see it on video. Cutting it open. Tofu looks done. Let's see. See the moment of truth. There we go. Do you know what? That, that's genuinely really nice, you know. It tastes a little bit like a uh, bubble and squeak. I don't know, I think that's just a UK thing, right? Bubble and squeak. But it tastes like that. It actually tastes really nice, you know. I'm not just saying that, trust me, if it wasn't, I'll tell you. It actually tastes pretty nice. Like I said, the tofu, I usually marinate, marinate myself. This is pre-marinated. Pre and in fact, the tofu, a lot of the time you get kind of the cubes already. You can get the slices as well. I thought this just saves me a lot of hassle coming out into the woods and cooking it. But you know what? Honestly, the tofu and mushrooms have come out all right, you know? Look at... Actually, this is the first proper thing I've cooked on the new fire pit. I've only just realised that. God, it's pretty cool. But like I said, we'll be doing a lot of cooking on this fire pit. A hell of a lot. I've got all the Dutch ovens. I've got everything ready to go. So there you go. This food's come out all right, man. So there you have it my friends, that is a wrap for this video. I appreciate you watching and I shall see you on the next one. And until then, as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. This is Ed from Outdoors. Peace out. Mm -hmm.